Alright, gonna do a bit of an update now. Um, no idea what time I left or how long it took to get here. One of those days. But I went up to uh, Staverton, um, just outside of Hilberton, near Trowbridge in Wiltshire. Um, rode there from my QTH um, through the town, so it was a good, good test for the trailer. Uh, it's fully loaded today with everything I'd normally take on a sort of CT extreme activation. Um, apart from the handheld CB, I've just brought out the PMR, 2 meters and 77, and the uh, dipole I made. Um, went around the marina in Staverton, didn't video, there's a couple of guys there working on boats, and people pay a lot of money to live in their houses overlooking the water. So, last thing they want, in that situation is sort of visitors videoing them as they're trying to take in the scene they've paid a lot of money for at their living room window. It's quite, it's quite a uh, stretch of water along here. Uh, the bit I've just passed is full of people that live in barges on the canal and you know the old tatty looking barges but I love them. I love the old tatty ones with the wood burners, smoke coming out the chimney, they've all got solar panels on the roof and logs and old bikes. Most of them have got fire pits outside. So again, people live there. I don't want to video them. So I want to quiet stretch now. I've seen a few dog walkers and cyclists. The trailer's going really well. Done a bit of clearing there, because of the telegraph pole, looks like it's bent. Maybe a tree fell on it. Um, but yeah, I was going to go to just to Staverton, sort of sit there and have a coffee, um, just to try out the trailer. And I decided to go along the cycle lane, because I think it comes out in Bradford and Avon. So I'm going to cycle down there. Um, unfamiliar ground, never been here before in my life. <laughs> Luckily it's a straight line, so I can't get lost. Um, but this stretch of canal, sort of slaloms and uh, runs alongside of the River Avon. Um, those of you in the area, you know where I am. Fantastic bit of waterway. I mean, I, this is what I miss about Kent. I miss a canal down there. A couple of swans over there. Looks like a little turning point. So yeah, just uh, out enjoying a bit of fresh air and just a test run just to get used to the trailer. The trailer is fantastic. I mean, it's loaded up with what I'd normally carry on my back, and it certainly made me realise how heavy um, it is actually on my back. There's a bench back there, I should have stopped on the bench. Yeah, um, steering's fine. The only thing is, when I go up slight hills, I don't normally change gear. <laughs> I've had to go right down my gears um, to get up the hill. Uh, pulling away is like pulling away in an old turbo car. You know, the turbo lag a couple of seconds and it kicks in because of the spring. I pull away and then a split second or two later, the trailer catches up and then the weight uh, pushes me forward. So it's quite sort of strange sort of pulling away, feeling the weight and then of course the spring tightening and it's sort of the catapult effect. It just reminds me of turbo lag. Apart from that, it's a dream to drive, ride, power, steer, whatever. Um, so yeah, I should be back in Brad. Uh, should be in Bradford and Avon shortly. I'll have a coffee, maybe a bite to eat. Um, well, yeah, I was going to try and find somewhere to try out the PMR antenna while I'm here. If not, I'm up the White Horse on Saturday for an hour or two. I'll uh, give it a go there. Failing that, I'll hold out to Sunday afternoon. And the DX, and I'll try out the new PMR antenna, little dipole. Alright, I'm going to get the phone away now and get two hands down and uh, do some proper pedalling. Ooh, more barges. I'll do a little video of them, but I like to be discreet, you know, people live here. It's like walking through a campsite of 
caravans and videoing through people's windows. It's just not nice. Right, I know where I am now. This is uh, the marina at Bradford and Avon. I pass it quite a lot and I keep meaning to come here. Bradford and Avon's about five minutes that way. But if I follow the canal, it's probably about an hour. So I'm gonna uh, jump over the bridge and pop in there, because when I go past in the car, I never really get a chance to stop. And I've wanted to just walk around and have a look at the boats for quite a while. So, uh, yeah, I think the bridge is just up there. We'll pop up. Might even get a chance to have a coffee in there. A fabulous life. What a wonderful part of the country. And here comes another boat. Gotta show you this bad boy. Fuck me. I think someone lives on it. As a beast. How it floats, I do not know. It's got no marine paint on the side of it, just bare wood. No windows. Yeah, live on it. Well, I didn't stop too long at um, Bradford Haven. Went in, done a once round. Um, paused, had a little butchers, and came out. Um, it's just too uh, populated by obviously people that spend a lot of money living there. It's a great site. Nowhere really to stop for visitors. It's mainly for people that are uh, passing by barge or living there, residents. So there's nowhere to stop. I'm not going to just stop there, please. Um, just came back on the track. You can see the odd person's been uh, borrowing a bit of firewood. They've all got log burners, and what they tend to do is just cut down the tree or the trees next to the, the boat, burn it, and then move to the next site. A bit of a waste of trees and a bit of a shame. You know, but that's just the canal life, I suppose. I've walked it a few times, but it's more enjoyable cycling. Right, I think we're coming to uh, Bradford Maven now, just around this bend. Is the Lock Inn, I think it's called, and that bike shop. If you know Bradford and Avon. Right, two hands again. Right, got to Bradford and Avon. Had a picnic here once. It was all overgrown. Two restaurants up there. Next to the Lock, fantastic food. That's like an old abbey or something, not sure. Can, um, this is the River Avon, and there's a canoe school over there with a jetty. So, just behind the train station now, to my right, Bradford and Avon. But every time I get my phone out to video, people turn up, so I have to keep cutting short. Um, yeah, great old town, Bradford and Avon. Been around here and done a bit of photography. Lovely house there with its own like jetty and their own little waterfall. Nice to have a natural spring going through your land. Um, just beyond there is an old church. It's a great like retirement village I call it, or postcard material. In a valley, not far from Bath. Bath for built in a volcano and Looking at the landscape, I wouldn't be surprised if this was too, but no, it's just uh, surrounded by hills. It's the bridge in Bradford and Avon, floods quite a lot. Can video here, just another tourist. It's 
Some great tea rooms there. fantastic spot was hoping to have a, a coffee on the bank here somewhere but the signs say residents only nice houses uh, yeah no fishing no uh, no public access so I go back down to the common part of the world and nah, not bothered I mean it is nice been up there before got some nice photos but uh, yeah not spending all day here, I need to be home by I think four, half four. So I'm gonna go back to where I landed earlier, um, knock up a brew, have a cigarette. Not gonna have time to try out the air and PMR, plus I'm extremely low down going by the hill in front of me. And I'm certainly not cycling up that. Building development, blah, 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 train tracks. Stop, look, listen. Pedal like fucking crazy. Now, luckily, all you get here is two carriages of diesel trains. No electric trains over here. We're miles from anywhere. All right, I'm going to head back behind the train station. I've just been for the town, back for the town again. Look at that tree. Every time I come down here, I think it's going to fall down. Right, head back down to where um, well, there's a gun emplacement there. Um, by the canal next to the canoe school or club I'll just have a coffee there I was going to buy one from a coffee shop but they're all tea rooms quite fancied having a coffee on that little island but there's like a sty on the bridge going across it and I can't fit for the sty um, it's only big enough just to get a, a person through let alone a trailer so yeah, I'm going to miss out on my coffee on here today. So I'm just having it here. Get the brew kit out. Get one on the way. Right, coffee's on the go. train track just beyond there, the River Avon, and there's the canal just beyond those trees. Yeah, and there's a big church, steeple, staple, stable, barn thing. Tourists seem to love it. Got the fleece on. Some old guy looking in the bunker. Right, um, halfway back, well, about a quarter of the way back. Uh, the plan was today to come along um, 
a foot cycle path. A cyclist out there, it's uh, cycle route number four in one of those pub restaurant things last year in the toilets at a map of the uh, cycle routes in Britain. And uh, I think this is number four. Uh, yeah, the plan was to cycle along here. Well, this is part of number four. Part of number four, anyway. Um, so yeah, I was going to cycle up here and then just go back the roadway because it was quicker. Um, I haven't got all day. I've got to be home late this afternoon. Family commitments, so on. Um, but I'm enjoying it so much. I mean, I've always enjoyed my bike. I'm really enjoying the trailer. And I love, love this waterway. I've always lived by the sea. This is the furthest inland I've ever lived. So it's the closest I'm going to get to sea in boats. So I've uh, opted out for going back the same way. Never a fan of going back the same way. Um, generally try not to. But uh, yeah, I could take the shortcut and go home the roadway and be home in 20 minutes. Oh, I'm going to do this one. I think it's probably about 40 minutes of cycling. Um, get a bit more confident with the trailer now. Getting to know the um, the width of it and which bumps I can take. So I can go a bit faster now. Um, so yeah, today was just about getting used to the handling. And now I've got used to it. So there we go. Going back the same way I came. So yeah, gotta go back this way and enjoy the scenery while we've got the weather. Right, see you in a bit. But on the plus side of me shredding the base to the trailer, it's a much more comfortable ride. Um, obviously I've de-inflated the tyres from 35 PSI. They're down to, I think, 10 on each one. Uh, no, 12 or 15, sorry, 12 or 15 PSI. So they still look inflated, but they're still really spongy, so they absorb all the, uh, the bumps. Um, obviously there's no suspension on a cheap model. And uh, yeah, if I had the hard base, all the gear inside would be bouncing about and rattling around. Um, that's the way I've got the bungees sort of strapped up and down for the base. They take all the impact, so everything in the, in the trailer just sort of bounces along naturally and quite smoothly and fluent but if I didn't have the tyres de-inflated and had them at the recommended 35 psi and that that rigid base it would just be thud 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 it would be like driving um, a massive empty can with marbles in it it would just be rattling around but yeah, the, the bungee cord for a base is absorbing all the impact. So when I do finally get around to building a box for this thing, I think I'm going to use marine plywood for the base and then work my way up. I'm going to notice a big difference. The gears just going to be bouncing about. Yeah, it's been good. Nice afternoon out. I think I left about half one. It's half three now, so I've been out for two hours. Yeah, and I was just plotting along up here. The battery's gone in my speedo. Uh, at a funny angle, I can see it. I'm doing about seven mile an hour instead of the usual 15 or 20. Um, but it makes a change, really, to sort of see more. Well, I'm going twice walking speed. I get to see a lot more than if I was just flying down here like I normally would. Again, there's some lovely, knackered, old looking boats. And I much prefer them. The ones that, you know, they just remind me of that song by Madness. Here comes the boat only half afloat. Uh, I love the old style. I'll just do a couple of minutes of video in silence um, before I come to the end of the track and I have to go back for the town to get home but check this bridge out I've never seen a bridge with turf on it 
but there's one in Annex somewhere in Northumberland. I think it's cool. <laughs> it's just grass. Someone there jumped off to take photos as I passed under a bridge. And then she's got to run along and jump back on again. But uh, yeah, that's where the marina is up there, where I first started filming. But I've stopped here because this way goes through an industrial state. And I've never been this way before, so I'm gonna chop through that way. But there you go, National Cycle Network. Five miles to Melksham, 10 miles to Divisors. Bradford and Avon, two mile, Bath 11 mile. Wow, I might have to go to Bath one day. Oh, and Trowbridge is only a mile. But again, I live through Trowbridge and out here beside towards Warminster. That's just so you can see where I am. And a random bike. That's the fag break done. <laughs> Let's see if I can get through that way. And back home. Well, all in all, pleased with it. I need a bit of mud splattered up it. Um, just a bit of a nightmare coming through towns. Because I can't do the usual weave through traffic and jump up and down curbs and so on, I have to stick with a line of traffic, which is now meaning slowing people down as I can't get top speed. But on the plus side, I can carry all that gear without knackering myself out. That's a good test. It's half four, so I've been out about three and a half hours. Oh, and I did stop off for uh, something to eat and drink on the way home, courtesy of Sainsbury's.